Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Chemicals from C2 Compounds. Before going into the details of today's lecture, we have a recapitulation of what we have discussed in the previous couple of lecture. We started discussing uh, production of uh, different types of uh, chemicals from C1 and C2 compounds. In the context of petrochemical industry, C1 compound means you know uh, the compound which is having only one carbon atom. Let us say CO plus H2 synthesis gas if you have, so you have only one carbon atom and then let us say if you have methane then also you have only one carbon atom. Such kind of compounds are uh, referred to as C1 compounds. So using such C1 compounds, you know, uh, we started uh, producing different types of uh, chemicals. In fact, we have seen using uh, these C1 compounds uh, methane, methanol, etc., then you can produce a number of uh, products, right? So, let us say we started with production of uh, uh, methanol from the uh, CO plus H2 mixture, this is what we have seen, and then uh, this methanol, whatever is there, that if you do oxidation or pyrolysis, it is possible that you get formaldehyde. The methanol that whatever is available in industry, more than 50 percent is utilized for the production of formaldehyde because it has huge number of applications, especially in the synthetic chemicals or uh, like you know polymer industries etc. It is having huge number of applications. Okay. So, that is the reason uh, we selected production of certain kind of chemicals which are having uh, much applications because we have seen like you know uh, pictorially n number of intermediates or uh, n chemicals are produced from C1 and C2 compounds. We cannot discuss all of them selectively we have considered a few. Then we have taken uh, methane and then we reacted uh, with the chlorine to get the methyl chloride which further react with the Cl2 to give uh, methylene chloride which further reacted with Cl2 to give chloroform which further reacted with the chlorine to give carbon tetrachloride etc. and then plus HCl was forming in all of these reactions, right. So, this chloromethane's production also we have seen. So, from C1 compounds we uh, discussed production of methanol, formaldehyde and then different types of uh, chloromethanes, all four types of chloromethanes we have discussed their uh, properties, chemical reactions associated with the selected process, process flow chart, description, engineering problems, all of them we have discussed. Then in the previous lecture we started discussions on uh, C2 compounds where primarily we have taken olefins, we did not take ethane but we have taken C2 H4 ethylene and then C2 H2 estylene, right. So, these are the two uh, C2 compounds we have selected and then uh, we have listed what, what are the types of different products you can get. Here also uh, number of uh, products can be produced. So, ethylene is the one uh, out of all olefins is having huge number of applications. So, one has to see how to improve the production of this one because we have seen in the process both ethylene and estylene are being produced simultaneously. So, next to the ethylene, estylene is the one which is having large number of applications. Since the ethylene is having uh, more applications as a uh, uh, primary chemical as well as the intermediate chemical to produce different types of uh, end chemicals as well as uh, other intermediate chemicals. The process uh, should be made such a way that more ethylene should be formed compared to the estylene. Next to the ethylene, estylene is the one which is having more applications, right. Then however, uh, before going into the production of uh, such kind of chemicals from C2 compounds, we discussed the production of these C2 compounds, especially ethylene, estylene we have seen, right. So, here uh, steam cracking or pyrolysis of uh, 
hydrocarbons is one of the important process where hydrocarbons you can use LPG or uh, C2, C3, C4 chemicals especially saturated ones that is uh, alkanes right or you can use naphtha as well right within the same process you can do uh, the uh, you can choose any of the feed or both feeds you can choose to produce uh, these chemicals ethylene, ethylene, etc. Right? So, but the problem uh, is that you know both of them are having you know different uh, reaction temperature and time. So, you cannot use them uh, both of them in the same reactor, same furnace you cannot use, same pyrolysis reactor you cannot use, different reactors you have used, you have to use and then after the pyrolysis or steam cracking whatever the products are there, those processing you may do simultaneously. That is what we have seen in this process of production of ethylene, we also get ethylene, uh, propylene. Uh, propane, butane, butylene, etc. So many other products also we were getting, and then separation of those products uh, we had done such a way that you know uh, more ethylene and then ethylene we get. If you do not want ethylene, then uh, the re reaction mixture containing primarily this uh, ethylene and ethylene has to undergo mild uh, hydrogenation so that that ethylene will also be converted into the ethylene such all those details we have seen we have also seen engineering problems associated with such process of a steam cracking of hydrocarbons to get ethylene and ethylene right so now in today's lecture we are going to produce different types of chemicals using such uh, c2 compounds right first we start with ethylene dichloride ethylene dichloride which is also known as 1,2-dichloroethane. Okay? Now, we are going to discuss about its properties, processes that are available to produce this chemical from C2 compounds and then out of the available process, we select one of the particular process which is uh, more economically feasible and then we discuss in detail flowchart engineering problems of such processes. Okay? So, ethylene dichloride is one of the intermediates for vinyl chloride monomer which polymerizes to PVC. Actually, the very next topic we are going to discuss the production of vinyl chloride. Right? So, ethylene dichloride can be used as a raw material to produce vinyl chloride monomer. This vinyl chloride uh, monomer we use to get PVC. Otherwise, vinyl chloride is, ha is not having any other application other than getting the polyvinyl chloride. So, it is in the captive products list. Okay? So, that we discuss after uh, completion of uh, ethylene dichloride production, then we go to vinyl chloride production. Pertinent properties of uh, ethylene dichloride, molecular weight 98.97, melting point minus 35.3 degree centigrade, boiling point 83.7 degree centigrade, density at 20 degree centigrade is 1.257 gram per cc, flash point is 15.5 degree centigrade. Ignition temperature is 412 degree centigrade. Explosive limits uh, lower and upper limits are 6.2 percent and 15.9 percent respectively. Toxicity it is toxic and then limit is 75 to 100 ppm only. It should not be present more than that one otherwise it will become dangerous. End uses as mentioned primarily it is used for the production of a vinyl chloride. This ethylene dichloride is used as a raw material to produce vinyl chloride and then that vinyl chloride is usually polymerized to get PVC or polyvinyl chloride. This ethylene dichloride is also used for the production of some anti-knocking agents which are useful uh, in the uh, automobile industries and then it is also used as solvent. Methods of production, three methods are there. First one is direct uh, uh, reaction between ethylene and then chlorine that can be done in liquid phase or vapor phase. And then byproduct of direct chlorination of ethane to ethyl chloride, when you do uh, chlorination of ethane that is ethane you take and then react with the chlorine to get the ethyl chloride like uh, uh, substitution reaction. Then in addition to the ethyl chloride, ethylene dichloride is also produced as a byproduct. Then uh, sometimes you do 
chlorination of uh, different types of uh, hydrocarbons then also there is a possibility that this ethylene dichloride we get as a byproduct. However, uh, looking uh, about uh, byproducts is not a uh, wise way of uh, discussing the production of uh, this product. So, then what we do? We discuss the major process that is a reaction between ethylene and chlorine to get the ethylene dichloride and then that reaction we can do in both liquid and vapor phase. So, production by ethylene and chlorine reaction. If you take the reaction, ethylene you react with the chlorine to get ethylene dichloride. You also get byproducts like HCl, etc. would also be there, all those things we are going to see. That depends on you know how pure is your uh, feed material. Okay. Quantitative requirements basis 1 ton of ethylene dichloride if you want to produce with 95 percent yield, ethylene 0.3 tons required, chlorine 0.75 tons required, ethylene dibromide catalyst a few traces are uh, required. Actually, if you do without uh, this uh, catalyst then yield would be slightly less. If you wanted to get uh, 90 to 95 percent yield, some traces of ethylene dibromide or uh, uh, ferric chloride may be added as a uh, catalyst to the system. Okay? By adding this catalyst the yield increases substantially that is the point and then you can see this catalyst you required only in traces not in much quantity. Cooling water 48 tons are required, co-products HCl is possible not only ethylene dichloride, but uh, propylene chloride, polychloroethanes, polychlorides may also be possible in this particular process. Plant capacity usually 30 to 150 tons per day. Now, we discuss the flow chart first and then discuss the process with the major engineering problems. So, whatever the uh, raw materials ethylene and then chlorine are there, they are sent to a reactor. Uh, by bubbling because this reaction whatever is there that we are discussing liquid phase reaction. Okay? So, they will be bubbled to the reactor tubular reactor to which uh, ferric chloride or ethylene bromide may also be added uh, in some traces as catalyst. Okay? Now, the reaction takes place here the uh, reaction is exothermic reaction as we have seen. When this uh, chlorine is involved, whenever the reaction uh, takes place between chlorine and some kind of hydrocarbons, the reactions are mostly exothermic and then lot of heat is evolved in general, but the reaction condition may not be required such high temperature. So, temperature may be required to maintain 45 to 50 degree centigrade only in this, uh, in this reactor and then pressure should not be more than 2 atmosphere. Right? In general, such conditions are maintained. So, then only proper uh, uh, yield or sufficient yield of uh, the main product will take place, otherwise uh, byproducts or unreacted reactants etc. may be there. These are the optimized conditions. Right? So, the, uh, the control of heat may be uh, done using uh, reactor heat control loop uh, by, by heat exchangers or uh, by coil or jacketed heat transfer fluids etc. are used in order to maintain such temperature. Right? So, uh, some partial recycling is also done in order to maintain the temperature because after the uh, reaction uh, whatever the products are there they would be uh, refrigerated and then some of them are taken as a recycle to the uh, system to the reactor so that the temperature would be under control because the these pro reaction product uh, mixture whatever is there that are being refrigerated before sending to the uh, recycle. Only purpose is to control the temperature within the reactor. Okay. So, then after this step what we do? We uh, whatever the uh, reaction product mixture is there that is usually in the two phases, one is the in liquid phase, another one is the gases phase. Whatever the gases are there they would be scrubbed with uh, 6 to 8 percent uh, NaOH solution so that to uh, scrub out the HCl and then whatever the non-dissolving components like uh, methane, hydrogen etc. are there they will be collected as off gases. Right? Whereas, the liquid portion of the product whatever is there that is also acid washed so that to remove any traces of HCl that are present along with the product. For that purpose also you are using 6 to 8 percent of NaOH. So, now here also after removing the acid uh, what you do? You do the some kind of compression to uh, remove the acid wash uh, 
uh, completely as much as possible. Then primarily after that uh, compression you will be having crude uh, ethylene dichloride as a product. Crude in the sense it may be having some heavy ends also. So what you do? You take this crude ethylene dichloride to a fractionator where uh, ethylene dichloride you can get as a top product whereas the heavy ends whatever are there they will be collected as a bottom products. So this is the uh, flow chart for uh, ethylene dichloride production by using reaction between ethylene and chlorine. Process description, ethylene with or without uh, ethane, methane and H2 diluent is mixed with Cl2 and bubbled through a liquid phase reactor. So you can use them if required otherwise you may not uh, need to use them especially the selection of these uh, diluent should be done such a way that if they are you know uh, suppressing the reaction temperature or it is not allowing the reaction temperature to go beyond uh, 45 50 degree centigrade for that purpose if they are useful then only you have to use but anyway if you use these kind of uh, chemicals like methane and ethane then some other products may also form right like you know uh, chlorinated methanes may also be forming ethyl chloride may also be forming then purification become difficult so one has to be very careful whether to take uh, these uh, additional diluents to control the uh, temperature pressure conditions within the reactor or is it better to control the temperature pressure by you know uh, proper uh, heat exchangers and then heat transfer fluids etc by or by uh, recirculating the uh, refrigerated product uh, mixture to the reactor. So these are the options you have to think okay, before making a decision. Ethylene dichloride product serves as the reacting medium. Heat of reaction is controlled by external heat exchangers and recycle or by coil or jacketed heat transfer to hold reactor at 45 to 50 degrees centigrade with a pressure of 1.2 to 2 atmosphere. Right? So this is because we are doing the whatever the process we discussed is for the liquid phase, liquid phase reaction. If you are doing for the gaseous phase reaction then condition may be different. Traces of ferric chloride or ethylene dibromide as catalyst gives 90 to 95 percent yield with little dimer formation. Gases products are cooled in two stages to strip the acid gas of ethylene dichloride. Liquid product is alkali washed and fractionated to get the product. Major engineering problems uh, are primarily process alternatives only. Operating reactor above 85 degrees centigrade provides for complete gaseous phase reaction. If you wanted to do in the gaseous phase so then you do the reaction above 85 degrees centigrade. That is one option or alternative available. Other thing is that solid catalyst such as aluminum chloride or uh, ferric chloride is packed in a tubular reactor uh, for this process variation thus eliminating the need for recycling ethylene dibromide. However, but if you do this process then what is the problem is that heat control is more difficult for this modification. So, uh, better is to go for the liquid phase reaction because their separation etc is also easy and then temperature you can control by applying the refrigerator and then cooling the product mixture and then sending some of the product mixture to the uh, reactor so that to control the uh, temperature of the reactor. Now we talk about vinyl chloride as already mentioned just now ethylene dichloride is a raw material to produce vinyl chloride that is one of the major process right. Other process is that you know you take ethylene and then react with hydrochloric acid to get the vinyl chloride. Both the processes we are going to discuss now. However, first we see the pertinent properties of a vinyl chloride and then uh, what are the processes available, what are the reactions of respective processes then uh, we talk about the flow chart and then major engineering problems associated with such processes. Pertinent properties of vinyl chloride, vinyl chloride is nothing but CH2 double bond CHCl. Okay. Molecular weight is 62.5, melting point is minus 153.8 degree centigrade, boiling point is minus 13.81 degree centigrade, density at 20 degree centigrade is 0.983 gram per cc. It is soluble in carbon tetrachloride, ethylene oxide and alcohols but slightly soluble in water. 
flash point is minus 77 degree centigrade, explosive limits lower and upper limits are 5 percent and 23 percent respectively. Toxicity uh, limit is 500 ppm, grade primarily vinyl chloride is used for the production of PVC only. So, only grade available is that polymer grade which is having 99 percent pure with some inhibitors as per the strength and other, other properties of the final PVC product. Those uh, inhibitors etcetera we discuss in the chapter on uh, polymerization. Consumption pattern vinyl chloride monomer is strictly an intermediate in PVC making polyvinyl chloride uh, making thus it is only in captive production. Other than uh, PVC making vinyl chloride is not having any other applications. But PVC is uh, very much useful uh, for large number of applications. So, vinyl chloride production is very much essential to understand. Coming to the methods of production, three methods are there. Ethylene dichloride thermal pyrolysis, you just take the EDC ethylene dichloride and then do the thermal pyrolysis in the presence of catalyst or in the absence of catalyst whatever possible based on the uh, economics, you do the pyrolysis, you can get the uh, vinyl chloride monomer. Other process is that acetylene HCl reaction. You take acetylene and then react with HCl then also you can get the vinyl chloride monomer. Other options are ethylene dichloride caustic reaction etcetera, but however we discuss these two methods now. Let us start with production of uh, vinyl uh, chloride monomer by ethylene dichloride thermal pyrolysis. If you take the reaction you have ethylene dichloride and then you do the thermal pyrolysis at 500 degree centigrade and then 4 atmosphere then you get the vinyl chloride as well as HCl co-product. Okay. Quantitative requirements basis 1 ton of vinyl chloride 99.5 percent pure with 95 percent yield if you want to produce. Ethylene dichloride 1.65 tons is required because it is the major raw material. This one is only undergoing pyrolysis to give vinyl chloride monomer. Heating steam because only uh, uh, reactant is ethylene dichloride here in this case. In addition to that one you need to supply the energy for the thermal pyrolysis to take place. So, heating requirement whatever is there that is supplied by the heating steam 2 tons required cooling water 30 tons required, electricity 1.5 kilowatt hours required, fuel gas 5.7 normal cubic meters are required, co-product HCl you get and then that also 0.65 tons you get if you are using 1.65 tons of ethylene dichloride as a reactant. Plant capacity usually 30 to 100 tons per day. Now, first we see flow chart and then we go to the engineering problems associated with this process. Whatever uh, ethylene dichloride that you have in the storage that you take pump it uh, through a heat exchanger to which steam is supplied so that this ethylene dichloride would be vaporized. So, vapors of ethylene dichloride would be passed through a dryer where you have silica gel adsorbents right. This silica gel would be absorbing any of the moisture etcetera that is present along with the uh, ethylene dichloride vapors right. Because in this uh, process corrosion is one of the uh, major engineering problems ok. So, that is the reason this uh, drying by silica gel is required. This dried uh, uh, ethylene dichloride is passed through tubular uh, pyrolysis furnace where the tubes are there. Right. So, in the reactor 500 degree centigrade and then 4 atmosphere pressure is maintained. So, what happens here these are the tubes right. The ethylene dichloride whatever is there that passes through these tubes only and these tubes are filled with charcoal or the suitable catalyst whatever is required. Primarily charcoal is taken as the catalyst. Now, the temperature has to be maintained higher because it is a thermal pyrolysis process. Uh, so, selected temperature is 500 degree centigrade. In order to get uh, 
such high temperature within the reactor, flue gases are supplied uh, to the shell, but they would be passing between the spaces that are available with uh, these tubes. These tubes are as you know, they are taken as bundles and they are inserted in a shell, right. Between the tubes, whatever the free area is there, through those uh, free areas, the flue gases are being supplied and then uh, from these uh, flue gases, the required energy of uh, 500 degree centigrade is attained so that whatever the uh, vapors of uh, ethylene dichloride passing through charcoal bed, they will also be heated to high temperature of 500 degree centigrade and then the thermal pyrolysis takes place. So, when this pyrolysis is taking place, what are you getting? You are getting vinyl chloride and HCl primarily. So, what you do? That you, that mixture would be at high temperature because the reactor is at high temperature. So, the product mixture whatever is coming that would also be at high temperature, right. So, that uh, product mixture is uh, quenched using ethylene dichloride quench. So, why are we selecting ethylene dichloride uh, for quenching the purpose? Because the uh, mixture whatever is there or vinyl chloride monomer is there, it is only slightly soluble in water. So, you, if you use the water, it is not possible to uh, do the uh, required absorption of monomer into the water and so that you can subsequently do the desorption and then uh, purification etc. That is not possible here. That is one reason. Other reason is that if you are using ethylene dichloride uh, 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 quench for the uh, quenching of vinyl uh, monomer, the back reaction will not take place. Otherwise, what happened? Vinyl chloride will be forming back ethylene dichloride. In order to stop that uh, back reaction, this ethylene dichloride quench is being utilized, okay. So, in the quencher, the HCl uh, vapors are condensed and uh, collected as a HCl acid. Some of that would be taken to the vinyl steel. So, now here primarily you have the vinyl chloride only you are having here, right. With little, you know, HCl or you know EDC etc. may be there. So, what you do? You take it to the vinyl still, still in the sense fractionators like distillation column, right. So, when you take this mixture to the vinyl still and apply the conditions, temperature, pressure conditions such a way that you know uh, vinyl still would be more on the top side and then it will be collected as top product after condensation and stabilization. Whereas, the uh, possible uh, polychlorides and then unreacted EDC etc. whatever are there, they will be collected as bottom product and then they will be sent to EDC steel where this EDC that is ethylene dichloride would be collected as a top product whereas the polychlorides and then any heavy ends are there, they will be collected as bottoms. The top product ethylene dichloride that can be taken as ethylene dichloride quench and sent to the uh, quencher or otherwise it can be taken uh, and then mixed with the reactant uh, ethylene dichloride vapor, dry it and then send back to the reactor as a recycle, vapor recycle as either way it can be utilized, okay. Process description, EDC vapor at 4 atmosphere is dried by silica gel and sent to stainless tubular cracking furnace. This is externally flue gas fired and controlled at 480 to 520 degree centigrade. Contact surface catalyst within the tubes is often charcoal in general. Conversion power pass is around 50 percent and ultimate yield is 95 to 96 percent. Spray quenching with cold EDC prevents back reaction. Uncondensed gases are sent to the surface heat exchange to remove the balance of uh, ethylene dichloride and vinyl chloride. Non-condensables containing hydrochloric acid are either sent to ethylene HCl process in an adjacent process area or water scrub to recover HCl as muriatic acid with 30 to 32 percent HCl purification. What does it mean by whatever this HCl that you get, you can take it uh, to the plant where ethylene is available and then react with this ethylene. then also you get uh, vinyl chloride. 
this is the second process we are going to discuss. So, whatever the HCl is produced here that can be utilized such a way that that can if you react with ethylene you get vinyl chloride as well. Major engineering problems charcoal formation if uh, you do the pyrolysis at higher temperatures more than uh, 400 500 degrees centigrade uh, then hydrocarbons whatever are there they will definitely form some amount of the uh, free carbon or charcoal. So, that occurs steadily until reactor has too high a pressure drop thus causing shutdown and cleaning periodically that is one problem one has to look in. But however, increasing conversion beyond 50 percent by longer residence time or higher temperature increases the carbon formation as well and promotes polymerization of monomer which you do not want. Polymerization subsequently later on you can do in a separate plant. Okay? Even carbon formation you do not want in any of the you know processes that we are discussing. Same is true for this process also because uh, once the carbon formation is done only you can produce CO or CO2 from it and nothing else. Of course, there may be some energy, but this carbon quantity is very less that, that whatever the energy produced by combusting carbon is going to be very less and of no use at all. So, you have to make sure that the carbon formation is negligible. Reactor conditions has to be worked out to optimize recycle loading versus reactor downtime and loss of yield. Second engineering problem is excessive corrosion is one important thing. So, excessive corrosion unless system is kept free of uh, water vapor that is the reason drying of the reactants etcetera has been done and then water is not used for the quenching rather EDC has been used. Other advantage of uh, using EDC as quench is that will stop the back reaction. Third engineering problem is development of proper cracking catalyst which prevents polymerization during the reaction. Okay, now, we have taken charcoal, but you know uh, you can uh, develop certain kind of catalyst which can provide uh, a good yield, but with negligible or no polymerization. Stabilization of vinyl chloride monomer is another important thing. For that, what you have to do? Antioxidants must be chosen appropriately, so that no interference will occur later in polymerization process. Now, we discuss other process of a vinyl uh, chloride monomer preparation that is production by ethylene HCl reaction. If you see the reaction, ethylene react with HCl at 160 to 200 degree centigrade and then gives vinyl chloride monomer. Quantitative requirements, basis 1 ton of vinyl chloride 99.5 percent pure at 97 percent yield if you want to produce. Estylene you required 0.462 tons, hydrochloric acid you required 0.6 tons, plant capacity usually 30 to 100 tons per day, process description estylene and HCl in 5 to 10 percent molar excess are vapor blended by jet mixing in a pipe, then passed through a tubular catalytic reactor containing carbon pellets impregnated with mercury chloride. Temperature is maintained at 160 degree centigrade and is gradually raised to 215 degree centigrade. So, that is the reason temperature should not be you know uh, uh, beyond 215 degree centigrade as the reaction temperature is between 160 to 200 degree centigrade. Why we cannot go beyond this temperature? Because if you go beyond this temperature catalyst deterioration takes place because these catalysts are nothing but carbon pellets impregnated with uh, mercury chloride. Okay? Process flow chart if you see whatever the reactant estylene and then hydrochloric acid are there, they are jet mixed and taken to a tubular catalytic reactor. Here this reactor again you know n number of tubes should be there, these tubes are filled with a catalyst. Right? In this case, uh, catalyst is nothing but carbon impregnated with mercury chloride. So, those are fit, uh, filled here okay? and then this mixture of estylene and then HCl whatever is there that is passed through these tubes in which you know the catalyst is uh, filled in. Right? 
So, the temperature is maintained uh, 200 degree centigrade between 160 to 200 degree centigrade and then pressure is not allowed to go beyond 1 atmospheric pressure. So, whenever the uh, such uh, reaction takes place, so then uh, heat would be evolved so that heat has to be controlled. So, now he here in this case what are, what are we doing? We are doing Dautam heating fluid, we are sub, uh, uh, circulating in the surroundings of these tubes that is the interstitial spaces between the tube bundles whatever is there. In, in those interstitial spaces you are uh, supplying this heat transfer fluids to control the temperature at what flow rate etc are you supplying and all that that depends on the heat transfer engineering calculation and all those things. So, one has to do those calculations right. So, now here the fluid is given and then from the top it is taken and then uh, regenerated and recirculated back that is all conventional process ok. So, product mixture whatever is there that would be having not only vinyl chloride but also unreacted uh, estylene and then uh, uh, hydrochloric acid also. So, that product mixture is taken to the stripper where you separate the HCl and then C2H2 estylene that you can take it as a recycle by passing through uh, jet mixer and then to the reactor right. If required that you can do, if you cannot handle that much of recycle some of this mixture or unreacted uh, mixture of HCl and uh, C2H2 whatever is there that you can do the purging also right. From the bottom of the stripper whatever the uh, remaining product mixture is there that is taken to a refrigerated fractionator right. So, that to get vinyl chloride as the top product after condensing and then stabilizing with the stabilizers. From the bottom of the uh, fractionators you will get heavy ends which you can take, uh, take to the storage or you can take them to batch still where you can get the ethylidine dichloride as top product and then aldehydes as the bottom product either options you can do if these are required ok. So, this is not EDC it, this is ethylidine dichloride CH3CHCl2. Okay. Effluent gases contain vinyl chloride which is separated from unreacted estylene and then HCl. These unreacted materials are being recycled. Major engineering problems catalyst deterioration and replacement is one of the important issue because you have a carbon or charcoal and then you are going beyond 200 degree centigrade. So, then combustion of such particles will also take place. So, you cannot go higher temperature. So, then catalyst deterioration and replacement is one of the engineering problem. Excessive corrosion unless a system is dry, avoiding polymerization of monomer these are the important engineering problems you have to look into ok. Now, the last topic of today's lecture is production of ethylene oxide. Ethylene oxide as the name indicates you can get by the oxidation of ethylene. You take ethylene and then do the oxidation you get ethylene oxide ok. So, what is the use of this one is that primarily it is used uh, to produce ethylene glycol ok. Nowadays it is also used in the detergents etc. also, but otherwise primarily it is intermediate to produce ethylene glycol. So, we start with the pertinent properties of ethylene oxide molecular weight 44.05, melting point minus triple 1.7 degree centigrade, boiling point 10.7 degree centigrade, density at 0 degree centigrade is 0 0.896 gram per cc, flash point is minus 15 degree centigrade, ignition temperature is 430 degree centigrade, maximum toxic limit is 25 to 100 ppm. Consumption pattern if you see primarily produced to serve as feedstock for production of ethylene glycol. In India it is also used for production of ethylene glycol polyesters, non-ionic detergents and ethanol amines also. In the uh, next lecture we are going to discuss the production of ethanol amines as well. If you remember ethanol amines are used as a uh, solvents to 
do absorption to remove undesired gases from the mixture ethanol amines are used and then some undesired gases are being absorbed in the ethanol amines. For that purpose ethanol amines are in general used. So, production of ethanol amines from the ethylene oxide we will be discussing in the next lecture. Methods of production direct oxidation of uh, ethylene to get ethylene oxides, chlorohydronation of ethylene two processes are there, but we select this process direct oxidation of ethylene. Chemical reaction you take ethylene and do the oxidation in the presence of uh, silver oxide at 250 to 300 degree centigrade and 4 to 5 atmosphere then you get the product ethylene oxide along with the byproducts or impurities like CO2 and then water vapor ok, it is exothermic reaction. Quantitative requirements basis 1 ton of ethylene oxide of 99 purity at 70 percent yield if you want to produce, ethylene 0 0.92 tons you require, air 9 tons you require, silver 0 0.3 kg in fixed bed and 0 0.7 kg in fluid as bed required. In addition to this one ethylene dichloride EDC suppressors are also used which is required 10 to 15 kg. Why it is required? So, in the process whatever the CO2 and then H2O are forming vapors are forming to reduce uh, their formation this ethylene dichloride suppressors are in general used in the process. Electricity 1500 kilowatt hour, steam 0 0.1 tons, water 180 tons, plant capacity is usually 30 to 300 tons per day. So, whatever the air and ethylene are there, they are separately compressed and then mixed and then sent to fixed bed tubular reactor along with the recycle amount also, some of the products are also being recycled ok. So, they are individually compressed, mixed and then sent to the tubular uh, fixed bed reactor. Here also we have bundles of tubes which are filled with uh, catalyst. In this case the catalyst we already know that silver oxide that can be taken as it is, but in general that is uh, supported on alumina in general right. So, these are taken here and then this mixture of uh, air, ethylene and then uh, recycled product streams or whatever are there, they are passed through these tubes in which the catalyst is there. Right. The temperature is maintained 250 to 300 degrees centigrade ok. So, here also the uh, reaction is exothermic. So, lot of heat would be evolved. So, the temperature of the uh, reactor has to be controlled for that purpose again Dautam heat transfer fluids are used ok. So, these fluids are circulated in the uh, interstitial spaces between the tube bundles that are present. So, in these spaces you circulate the uh, this Dautam fluid so that you know the temperature is controlled. The selection of the flow etcetera those things are depends on the heat transfer calculations right. So, whatever the product mixture is there that is passed through waste uh, steam heat boiler so that to recover some of the heat and then uh, some, some of it is uh, recycled to the reactor some of it is taken as a purge stream. After that what it is done? It is compressed and then sent to a water absorber so that what whatever ethylene oxide is there that would be absorbed in water and then whatever the unreacted ethylene uh, etcetera are there they will be sent back to uh, waste heat steam boiler and then through that one it is recycled back to the reactor again right. So, the solution whatever is there from the water absorber is there that you take through a heat exchanger, heat it and then take it to the desorber right. So, here what, what you do? You do the desorption of EVO so that EVO primarily you can get it as a product right. So, here uh, when you pass through heat exchanger some amount of water is uh, recovered and then that is recycled back to the water absorber. So, whatever the degree of desorption you do here uh, along with the product some amount of uh, moisture and then light ends would be there. 
So, what you do? You take the top product of the desorber which is primarily ethylene oxide, but it is not pure ethylene oxide, it will be having light ions and then moisture etc. So, that you compress and then take to a stripper, do the fractionation so that you get this light ions and water as top product and then bottom ones you get as a crude uh, ethylene oxide because it will also be containing some heavy ends also. So, this mixture you take to refining steel where you do the refining of the crude to get ethylene oxide as a top product of required purity whereas the bottom products would be nothing but heavy ends. Okay? Process description 95 to 98 percent pure ethylene and air are compressed separately then mixed together to have 3 to 10 percent of uh, ethylene volume concentration. This mixture passed over silver oxide on a porous inert carrier such as alumina. Side reaction like oxidation reaction producing CO2 and then water vapor uh, suppressing agent such as ethylene dichloride is also added to the feed though it is not shown in the flow chart, it is in general added. Reaction is highly exothermic and is best carried out in a fixed bed tubular reactor. For the reactor heat transfer salt or dothem is pumped around the tube within the shell to maintain the temperature of 250 to 300 degree centigrades. Heat is recovered in waste heat steam boiler. A short residence time of 1 second in plug flow with an yield of 60 to 70 percent is possible. Effluent gases from the reactor are water washed under pressure. Absorbed ethylene oxide is sent to a packed bed desorber, fractionator tower and taken as overhead product as shown in the flow chart. Even after desorption, it still contains large amount of water vapor along with some impurities. This stream is then compressed to 4 to 5 atmosphere and fractionated twice to remove light ends, water and then high boiling polymers in two different uh, uh, you know two different columns. Okay? Coming to the major engineering problems alternatives, process has large number of alternative flow sheets depending on customer conditions, patent rights and then uh, experience of uh, uh, design construction firm etc. Some of them are uh, shown here, volume ratio of air ethylene, use of reactors in series, air versus oxygen, then fluidized bed versus fixed bed reactor, hydration of ethylene oxide to glycol are the some of the option. We discuss individually about these 5 options. Let us say process alternative by use of different air ethylene ratio. 3 percent lower explosion limit for ethylene is there, ethylene or ethylene oxide in the air is there. So, uh, you cannot go more than that one. So, 3 percent lower explosion limit for ethylene or ethylene oxide in air with a high heat of reaction has caused some designers originally to keep it or below this value in considering process uh, stream concentrations. This is done by uh, recycle inert from absorber after side stream purge to remove CO2 and H2O as well. Okay? Conversion is claimed to be improved at low ethylene concentration of 3 to 5 percent in nitrogen carrier stream. Explosion hazard has been minimized by use of explosion proof standards and careful operation or operating procedures so that all ranges of concentrations are being used depending more on reactor conversion characteristics desired rather worrying about the explosion because explosion proof standards if you follow then you can uh, work over wide range of concentrations. Second option is process alternative by use of reactors in series. Two reactors in series are used to convert more of ethylene with overhead gas from water absorber introduced into a second reactor, whatever the overhead gases you are getting from the uh, water absorber in which uh, you know ethylene oxide is being absorbed. So, then from the top whatever the gases are there, they would be uh, involving unreacted ethylene and then air along with CO2 and then water vapor etc. So, that mixture if you take to the second reactor, so then it has been found that you know yield is going to be improved. 
This is an economic balance between cost of ethylene and fixed charges on additional reactor. Okay? So, you have to see the balance. Is it better to do the uh, recycling or you take another uh, reactor and then see? So, that depends on the cost of ethylene and then fixed bed charges on additional reactor. One reactor is definitely is required if you have additional reactor that is more economical so then you go for the second reactor otherwise you go for the you know uh, uh, recycling process. Process alternative by use of air versus oxygen options. Most of the plants in general uses uh, uh, air because uh, large tonnage of oxygen is not available within the process. Okay? Mostly Ethylene oxide plants are not located near low cost oxygen sources at present. So, majority of plants are based on air oxidation process. However, in case where a plant complex has a large tonnage low cost oxygen available, it may be advantageous to consider oxygen rather air because space time yield within a given reactor volume is increased to 3 to 4 times if you use oxygen rather uh, Eight. Okay. In addition, absorber can be smaller since product concentration is six times greater. And the product, you know, uh, concentration of uh, product is higher, so then you don't need to do much absorption of, you know, uh, absorption process. So they can be smaller. Process alternative by use of fixed bed versus fluidized bed reactors is another alternative process alternative. Obviously, fluidized bed operations would be ideal from heat control standpoint of view. However, in this process, fluidized bed uh, reactors having certain drawbacks uh, such as widespread residence time distribution pattern due to mixing in a fluid bed, whereas you know you need uh, uh, plug flow kind of flow for a fraction of second or one second for the reaction to take place. So, this is one disadvantage which you cannot. Uh, uh, overcome in fluidized beds. Difficulty of uh, preventing catalyst sintering is another problem in the fluidized beds. Transfer of uh, silver oxide to vessel walls slowed the development of this process alternative as well. And then final uh, engineering problem uh, or alternative is process alternatives by hydration of ethylene oxide to glycol. Hydration reaction is thermodynamically possible yet water is used in the absorbing desorbing train. This is because the hydration rate constant is not significant at low temperature. If the uh, rate of reaction of hydration of ethylene oxide to get the ethylene glycol is happening at, uh, at better rate at atmospheric conditions of 20 to 30 degree centigrade, then you can do that one. But that is not happening because of that one. Uh, absorbing and desorbing trains are used in the process. Commercial hydration process use temperatures around 150 degree centigrade in general. Coming to the uses of uh, ethylene oxide, as already men mentioned, it is strictly a chemical intermediate used to produce ethylene glycol by hydration of ethylene oxide okay, that we subsequently study. The references for today's lecture are provided here. Thank you.